improving flow reproduction applicable strategies not only this non organized sector organized people are also not aware that is reproduction when we talk about uh, reprodu reproduction of this indian sheep and goat it's very low due to delayed puberty uh, delayed yeah, or long lambing and feeding intervals less prolificacy and existence of non breeding season in some areas so uh, due to these reasons we are not able to exploit the production potential of these uh, animal and in addition to it uh, embryonic motility is also a major concern nobody is focusing on this aspect embryonic motility and fetal losses this reproductive efficiency is uh, presented in term of number of lambs or kids weaned per breeding ewe or doe in a year this number of lambs weaned will depend on uh, the mating of the animal means how many animals are infertile the duration of infertility or duration of fertility a number of ovulation means when there will be more ovulation more uh, fetuses will be there and more lambs will be there so number of lambs weaned per breeding ewe or doe will be more another one is to decrease the, uh, this fetal loss another one is loss of uh, newborn animals before weaning so these are the factors which affect the reproductive efficiency so we will focus on these four uh, aspects to improve the reproductive efficiency of sheep and goat so first is to uh, to decrease the uh, non productive period and to control the breeding period of the sheep and goat another one is to maximize the potential litter size by augmenting the ovulation rate and third one is uh, minimizing post fertilization wastage by ensuring successful embryonic and fetal development and fourth one is to ensure the survival of newborn and their ability to grow and mature into productive life efficiently so uh, talking about the minimizing the non productive period first thing we will discuss about breeding season seasonality in sheep and goat limits the reproduction rate of ewe we are not able to get more than one crop per year in an animal which which has a gestation period of 5 months only so uh, this is limiting our reproduction efficiency most of people say that yeah uh, these are the seasonal breeder but i don't think they are seasonal breeder because uh, the seasonality depends on the location of the uh, or climate of the uh, place the states like uh, rajasthan to uh, andhra telangana uh, these states are uh, very close to equator and uh, there is no seasonality at all and in the region which are very closer to uh, which are very far to this equator like uh, the temperate area in kashmir high altitude of uh, uttarakhand and himachal uh, there may, may find some type of some sort of seasonality and the animal in these temperate uh, region they cycle during fall season otherwise they remain low low breeding type animals so this seasonality uh, depends on this photo period is mainly whenever there is decrease length of photo period is more light dnrx will be released more from hypothalamus and uh, animal will come into stress so how to induce this stress uh, in these seasonal breeder animals one approach is to use this ram effect or buck effect in sheep and goat when there is sudden introduction of novel male this can induce ovulation female that are reproductively quiescent because they are out of season or lactating it may work for advancing the first cycle in young ewes whenever uh, females are kept away from uh, males and male is introduced in this uh, flock uh, there are chances that the animal can, may come into stress uh, within 6 to 10 days and may ovulate and this first cycle will be very uh, this will be of very short phase and animal will into come into stress after uh, at to 10 days after short cycle and that second stress will be very much fertile when we use this ram effect we can uh, use alternative approach along with this uh, ram effect that we can use progesterone based synchronization scheme suppose uh, the breeding season is going to start after one month we can uh, insert progesterone sponge and after 10 days 12 days we introduce a ram to the flock and uh, there are chances that animal will come into stress so uh, these are the mechanism of this male effect the pheromones modulate uh, this uh, stimulate the olfactory senses and this in turn 
uh, stimulate hypothalamus to release GnRH uh, through this GnRH, this FSH and LH, ovary will uh, start to secrete more estrogen, follicle will start uh, its growth. And when we use progesterone based uh, and prostaglandin based uh, treatment along with this male effect, the fertility rate is uh, found to be more. Another one is to induce stress by uh, light or changing the uh, day length. So as I told that uh, sheep and goat are seasonal uh, short day breeder in case of temperate region. So when we uh, decrease the day length, there are more chances to come into stress. We have to uh, expose the females for around two to three months into higher light, and then we have to uh, reduce the duration of this light uh, for another two to three months. So it will uh, simulate, simulate the natural phenomena when uh, this nature decreases the light period, uh, this induces the stress, and we can synchronize also. As I told that there are some limited areas where there is seasonality in sheep and goat and remaining areas where uh, in temp, uh, tropical and subtropical, there is no seasonality. Even though uh, there is no seasonality in sheep and goat, we are not able to uh, achieve uh, three lemmings in two years. Uh, what are the reasons? When male and female are living together, grazing together, you are not able to identify whether this animal is, in, is coming into stress or not, whether this animal is fertile or sterile or infertile. We must change our management practices to increase the productivity. First one is to separate male and female so that we can go for hand mating after stress detection, don't go for throughout year breeding. We have to restrict the breeding season or we can say that we have to artificially create a breeding season in sheep and goat. We can divide this uh, season into two to three months in a year, and then we have to go for stress detection and uh, hand mating. What should be the breeding season? So season of breeding should depend means decide the season of birth. And uh, season of birth is more important than season of breeding, as uh, for growth of uh, lambs there will be a, a proper requirement of nutrition of dam as well as lambs. So we'll decide on the basis of nutritional adequacy in which month we have sufficient pasture land, we have sufficient uh, food resources. And another factor will be when a newborn is, uh, the kid or uh, lamb is born, what, what are the environmental temperature, environmental stress. So if uh, we take the crop in uh, January, December or January in Rajasthan, so uh, there will be huge mortality. So we have to keep in the mind that when we have to uh, take the crop and accordingly we have to decide the time of season. Uh, another thing we can take into consideration is market opportunities. And uh, when, whenever there's increasing demand uh, of the meat, we, we can plan accordingly the breeding season. And another thing is best mating time also. Uh, many times when, suppose in May or June in Rajasthan, when we plan mating, uh, there will be good chances that uh, animal remains in stress due to heat stress, or if they are mated, there are chances that uh, there will be more embryonic losses due to this environmental stress. So these will be factors we, we should take uh, consider. In uh, CSWRI, we can other uh, we have divided this breeding season into two breeding season, major and minor. Uh, minor season we take from 15th March to 30th April, and uh, the major breeding season we, we took from 1st September to 15th October. And the lamb will born in case of first breeding season in August and September when there will be uh, sufficient pasture and uh, green availability, and we have al almost escaped the peak summer also. And by uh, onset of winter, uh, the lambs of kids will be mature enough, grow, grown enough. And in case of uh, the major breeding season, the lambing will occur in uh, Feb, uh, Feb to March. And we have passed the, uh, this peak's winter season also. And uh, there will be reduced stress on these uh, newborn animals. When we talk about the region where there is no harsh environment like in uh, southern states, it is a breeding season and we can 
take third breeding, breeding season also to exploit the reproductive potential of eggs and we can plan accordingly. So when we will have a breeding season uh, and in each breeding season, we can take two to three stress cycle. Just before start of breeding uh, season, we, uh, we should start stress reduction around 15 to 20 days before so that those animals which are infertile or any stress with, uh, which are not coming, coming to stress, we can uh, induce stress through uh, this exogenous hormones or other approaches. So in this way, we can decrease the number of animals which are non-productive. And uh, through this breeding season, uh, there will be limited period of uh, time when we have to focus on stress reduction and mating. And uh, similarly, we have to uh, reduce focus on this labor to manage the newborn animals also and the marketing will be also very much easier in that case because the lamb crops, crops will be of the same size when we market them when we go for stress detection uh, we have to take care that we should uh, go for stress detection twice a day in the cooler hours of the day that are morning and evening for 15 to 20 minutes using teaser ram or bug with good libido uh, teaser can be androgenized female also, vasectomized males, but uh, androgenized female, I do not think that it's a practical and viable uh, method for long term. And vasectomized male, you need a veterinarian to do vasectomy and this animal won't be useful for mating. So the best approach is to use apron male. So you can say, you can see this apron, this is nothing but a uh, cotton cloth of uh, half by half meter size that can be tied uh, on the male's abdominal area so that it, it will prevent the mating. The male and female ratio should be 1 is to 34 normal clock and when we go for stress synchronization, the number of males should be increased in that case. So another issue uh, is any stress whenever we are not able to provide uh, sufficient nutrition, uh, animals are uh, prone to any stress and infertility because uh, nutrition is the most important factor and aspect all the, uh, affect all the aspects of reproductive event from gametogenesis to puberty. And this nutrition and stress of animal affects the follicular growth, maturation and ovulation. And this uh, negative energy balance, particularly during this postpartum period, this will re uh, result in reduced dry matter intake uh, during late gestation and this may result in Decreased GnRH release from hypothalamus and LH pulsity, uh, pulsicity that may result in prolonged postpartum and stress. So uh, we have to take care of nutritional aspect and environmental stress also. Whenever there is a uh, high temperature or very much low temperature, the dry matter intake will decrease and secretion of gonadotropin will decrease and high environment temp uh, environmental temperature will uh, induce uh, hyperprolactinemia and whenever there is a high concentration of prolactin there will be reduced concentration of gonadotropin and this follicular genesis will be affected uh, another thing lactation uh, it uh, reduces the follicular genesis similarly suckling also have negative effect on uh, this gpg axis and parasitic infestation and periparturin diseases, they also ad uh, adversely affect the fertility or cyclicity of the animal. So uh, to go for treatment, uh, first we need to eliminate the predisposing factors, uh, like we need to go for nutritional management, supply of uh, sufficient uh, uh, energy source and mineral micronutrients, and reduce the climatic stress, yeah, uh, usually we go for breeding at three and four months, three or four months. We can reduce it by two to two and a half months. So by early weaning, we can uh, reduce the uh, period of postpartum and stress. Other thing, we need to go for routine pregnancy diagnosis also. Many times uh, animal remains pregnant and we think that it's infertile or non-cyclic. So these are the factors. In treatment aspect, there are number of plant-based heat inducers you can uh, that are very much rich in minerals, antioxidants like uh, moringa, uh, curry leaves, uh, satavri. These are these are very rich in uh, estrogenic contents or uh, antioxidants. We can feed these these th things to animal, and uh, definitely these will help in 
this induction of stress. And another thing is herbal preparation we can use. And, and this clomiphene citrate has been also proved to be uh, effective in uh, some of the studies in India also. So it can also induce stress. The most important hormone is progesterone for treating this anistress. You can uh, use the implant or vaginal sponge and keep it for nine to 12 days. And when you withdraw, you can insert prostaglandin also. If you, you have uh, availability of this polygon PMSG, so you can insert 200 to 400 in internal IEM at sponge withdrawal. And uh, there are chances that 40 to 50 percent animal will be any stress animal will be uh, stress. And uh, those animals which have persistent corpus luteum or uh, some luteal cyst or having uh, sub stress or silent stress, they can be treated by prostaglandin uh, at the rate of 0.5 ml uh, of this chloprostenol. The important hormone is melatonin that has not been very much used in our country. This is used uh, as an implant in the name of regulin. Regulin comes in formation of 18 mg uh, silicone implant. And uh, when we insert this, 80% animals uh, come into an anistress animal into come to stress. Recently, we have tried one experiment in our uh, uh, Bikaner center that inserting this melatonin in, uh, mixed, after, uh, mixed in corn oil and injecting subcutaneously, it was able to induce stress in 80% of no, uh, any stress females. Another one approach we have tried over here in CSWRI Abhidhanagar uh, using dopamine receptor antagonist. Uh, one uh, dopamine receptor antagonist sulfide that is used as a, uh, used for treatment of uh, schizophrenia. It's an antipsychotic drug. And this dopaminergic circuits are there in hypothalamus and they regulate this LH surge or GnRH surge and these do improve this enhance the negative feedback sensitivity of estradiol negative feedback on LH during uh, LH surge when we use this uh, receptor antagonist it will, it will uh, dec decrease the sensitivity of estradiol negative feedback and the animal may come to stress and we used 0.6 mg per kg subcutaneous uh, dose twice a day. And most of the animals came into stress in within the window of two to nine days. Second approach to increase the reproductive efficiency in sheep and goat is to maximize the potential litter size by increasing the ovulation rate. So some experiments will use immunological and hormonal approaches like the use of FSH or PMIC, but these are not very much reliable. Immunological approach have also been used like the uh, anti androstenedione hormone vaccine, but the result of these were not consistent. But after this uh, finding of FACB gene, FACB uh, gene was first identified in Australian Merino sheep that is responsible for follicular and enhanced prolification of the cells. So this is like a growth factor. So if there was one mutation, point mutation, and the animal had more prolificacy. So by using this gene through crossbreeding, we can enhance the prolificacy of animals. And uh, CSWRI has developed a breed Avisan sheep, in which this factory was introduced from Gerol sheep of Bengal, which has factory gene, and uh, the prolificacy increased to 74% in Malpura sheep. That is usually monotocus. So the uh, constitution of this avishan is Gerol, Malpura, and Patanwari. Similarly, one more breed has developed by this Nari, Nari Shwarna. And this has also three to four breeds, and it has also uh, introduction of fake B gene from uh, this Gerol sheep also. When we have more prolificacy, uh, we have observed that at three months of age, uh, you productive efficiency was increased by 50%. Whenever there are two to three lambs, the winning weight will be, yeah, individual body weight will be less when there are more lambs, uh, but ultimately the EU performance, EU productive efficiency will be more because uh, two to three lambs can uh, increase the body weight of the litter. Uh, coming to uh, this um, goat, 
and people have tried to find this uh, type of uh, mutation or uh, this fake B gene, but uh, yeah, still we are not able to find any mechanism. What is the mechanism of this prolificacy in black Bengal goat or beetle or any other breed which have prolificacy? But the mechanism is uh, not similar to this sheep, and people are working on this one. But we can improve the prolificacy through uh, integration of this fake B gene. And whenever we uh, uh, made this revision with non descriptive or other breed, F1 will have chances that this fake uh, B has been integrated, and the next generation will have more uh, number of ovulation and uh, lambs. And another approach is nutritional approach. Those animals which have very low body condition score, they are uh, extra supplemented concentrate to 25 to 50 percent of their maintenance requirement. Uh, before two to three weeks of uh, breeding, there will be increase in body condition score by half and half a score, and it has been observed that around 25 percent increase in ovulation and lambing rate. Uh, one mechanism is that this positive energy balance will increase the leptin and insulin concentration and will increase the glucose uptake, and that will enhance the polyglogenesis and ovulation rate. And another approach is that uh, mechanism is that. Higher intake of proteins, this increases the level of hepatic steroid metabolizing, uh, metabolizing enzymes. And this uh, steroid metabolizing enzyme will cl uh, increase the clearance rate of steroid, uh, steroids. And whenever there is decreased concentra concentration of the steroid, uh, there will be less negative, inhibitor, uh, negative feedback on the growing follicles and less follicle will go into atresia. So uh, if less follicles are going into atresia, there are chances that more follicle will be selected for uh, ovulation and prolification may be increased. So this is the mechanism. Uh, many uh, studies have been done in abroad in, with the, using lupin or this uh, intravenous glucose. And all the studies they have reported, whenever they found a good result, they reported that there is decreased estradiol concentration and that helped in increase in the ovulation rate. Animals which are very good fed and which have very good or excessive body condition score uh, during the height of breeding season, they won't respond to this flushing. In Rajasthan, in our area, uh, the local people, local sheep farmers uh, usually fed acacia pods to the animals during April and March after the scarcity. And they usually report that yeah, our prolificacy has been improved from uh, by this acacia feeding. And the, this plushing will not in, improve the ovulation in uh, younger animals also, because younger animals usually remain on a higher diet, uh, high plan of nutrition. So uh, it won't affect or it won't in, improve the ovulation rate. So what, what could be the approach to increase the ovulation rate in case of uh, good body condition scores animal. So one mechanism is supplementation of omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acid. Uh, we uh, tried an experiment in goat in IVRI Jatnagar, where we fed uh, fish oil as a source of omega-3 PUFA at the rate 0.6 ml per kg body weight for 72 days. And we found that uh, the ovulation rate was increased by 41% to the control group in which palm oil, the isocaloric and isonitrogenous uh, group was maintained, even then ovulation rate improved by 41%. Uh, by this mechanism, we can announce the prolificacy. And in this finding, we reported that the yeah, cholesterol level was significantly reduced by supplementation of fish oil, as uh, that is advocated in human being also in uh, high cholesterol people. And uh, through this cholesterol, estradiol level was also decreased. So as I was telling that estradiol is a main factor in all the experiments, whenever there is reduced estradiol, it has been reported that yeah, ovulation, chances of ovulation will be, uh, or folliculogenesis will be improved. So uh, same experiment we conducted in sheep in Abhidhanagar also, and we found that 56% uh, of supplemented EU has a multiple ovulation at the end of uh, two months feeding. And the mean number of preoperative follicle was increased by 78%. And out of the almost 60% ovulation were increased. 
then they control it which were fed uh, palm oil and number of fetus was also improved by 46% in case of palm oil, uh, fish oil fed eggs then the control and twinning percent was increased by three times and that was 20, 27% in malpura eels which is otherwise a multi, single ovulatory species and single fetus bearing species we are now uh, conducting a, an experiment in avishan also whether uh, this will enhance the further ovulation rate in avishan which is uh, multiple fetus bearing species but this is the mechanism we can increase the polyficacy in normal body condition score another approach is to decrease the fertilization waste post fertilization waste that are uh, embryonic loss and uh, this uh, fetal loss so embryonic loss very uh, major concern uh, in case of sheep and goat but these remained unnoticed because the epidemiology of embryonic loss as well as abortion in sheep and goat is well not in uh, not well investigated in india because uh, the ewes are generally allowed to run with the ram during breeding season and they are not uh, segregated and estrus and mating is not recorded properly and any time the, if there is any embryonic loss or abortion they are not frequently observed so these things remains unnoticed so as i told that when you keep segregated these both male and female and uh, you go for hand mating you will be able to notice the embryonic loss when there uh, uh, animal coming into stress after 22 to 30 days uh, you can assume yeah it's late embryonic death causes of these are embryonic losses are handling heat st- environmental stress diet change hormonal insufficiency uh, lack of placental uh, placentation what is the mechanism of this early embryonic death and how we can now encounter this one the growing fetus around uh, time of maternal recognition of pregnancy which is around 16 to 17 days in case of c goat and 13 to 14 days in case of c the fetus secrete some signal which indicate the female yeah that the i'm uh, I, i'm here and you to reduce this endometrial prostaglandin production because this pgf12 is responsible for luteolysis and uh, return into stress so by decreasing by uh, this interferon decreasing the endometrial pgf12 pass survive the fetus so when there is failure of maternal recognition of pregnancy there will be increased endometrial prostaglandin production and there will be chances of luteolysis and embryonic death So, so uh, the ultimate strategy to reduce this early embryonic death is to decrease this prostaglandin production anyhow, or to in- improve the progesterone pro- production during the time of, uh, around the time of maternal recognition of pregnancy. What are the strategies? These are the similar to the cattle we use in cattle and buffalo. We can insert HCG or GnRH on day five or eleven. That will help in uh, production of accessory corpus luteum and more production of progesterone. we can use pmsg also that will have similar function we can directly insert the progesterone sponge uh, after 6 to 8 days and we can uh, inject recombinant interferon to also uh, but we have to take care when we are injecting this thing uh, i wish to share one ex- uh, one experiment we were conducting in uh, at avika nagar and uh, one of my colleague was working on uh, semen extender and uh, when we went for fertility trial using 48 hour and 72 hour semen the fertility rate was very conception rate was very low and most of the people uh, animals were coming into stress he told that uh, whether there are chances of embryonic death i told yeah yes sir uh, it is it might be it is possible so what should be the strategy i told that uh, yeah these are the strategy we can use using gnrh or progesterone then he told that yeah i'll use this progesterone in both the groups and we'll check that whether it's it works or not so uh, i told him that you to keep in mind that when you are injecting progesterone once this luteolysis happened and this progesterone is inserted that will uh, negatively change the uh, hormonal milieu and this may result into abnormality and he um, literally injected uh, all the animals progesterone so those animal which were uh, in the stage of 11 to 12 days they came into stress 
but those animal which were around 16 to 17 days of stress or mating when this progesterone was uh, inserted these animal did not come into stress and it told yeah that non return rate is very less so i think this hormone has worked i told the yeah i have to check these animals and when i went for ultrasonography i found that all the animals which did not came uh, come to stress after this progesterone had developed follicular and luteal cyst because after luteal cyst you are injecting progesterone and the hormone milieu has changed so it is very important aspect when we we have to insert these hormones because without any physiological knowledge we should never use these hormones and another approach is to uh, supplement omega 3 fatty acid uh, as i told that uh, omega 3 has a positive influence on follicular genesis but the uh, main function of omega 3 is to modulate this prostaglandin production Um, because omega six precursor is arachidonic acid, and uh, this arachidonic acid is precursor of prostaglandin. So whenever we supplement omega three fatty acid, there will be more incorporation of omega three fatty acid, and uh, like EPA, DHA, or alpha linolenic acid, and uh, the production of prostaglandin will be reduced. We have seen this in uh, an experiment in goat that uh, its uh, concentration goat significantly decreased. so uh, by decreasing this prostaglandin production we can improve the survival chances of embryo but when to give this omega 3 fatty acid so uh, as this inhibit the prostaglandin production and act as an antiluteolytic agent around the time of breeding before breeding and just after breeding if we supplement there will be reduced product uh, production of prostaglandin as well as increased follicular genesis so this should be the time and around time of uh, parturition we should supplement omega 6 fatty acid because these enhance the prostaglandin production naturally and that accelerate the uterine ovulation and resorption of cyclicity and these oils or fats can be used as a clean green and ethical tool that can be cost effective also and improve the reproductive efficiency of livestock another one is fetal loss so fetal loss uh, there are two type two causative agents may be there um, one is non infectious causes and one is infectious causes we have uh, reading like brucella campylobacter bacteria listeria leptospira and all other. and in non infectious causes uh, heat stress trauma and fetal deficiency as it affects uh, not only follicular genesis but embryonic survival or uh, fetal survival also and uh, ingestion of poisonous plant and faulty administration of hormone you are not aware about the reproductive status of uh, animal and you just inserted prostaglandin animal will abort these are the uh, cause of fetal loss what are the mechanism we can adopt to prevent this uh, uh, abortion first one is to uh, monitor the flock regularly whether uh, abortion happened and as early as detect this it should be reported and proper diagnosis should be there the veterinarian must obtain a good nutritional and clinical history more than 5% of eaves of does in flock are aborting so there are more chances of infection infectious causes rather than nutritional and non infectious causes we need to know what are the cause and what is the intensity of abortion or whether it's abortion storm in any uh, flock so uh, owner should also be made aware about the importance of this one and whenever he is keeping record of all the mating and uh, all the things he is keeping the record of uh, date of breeding he may easily identify the time of abortion and stage of abort abortion and uh, the veterinarian should uh, ask to laboratory personnel uh, that what chances you are encountering more in case of le- in, in laboratory and uh, w- what are the more prevalent uh, positive agent in this region so by we can identify the this cause of uh, abortion and decrease the incidence first thing is reporting of first abortion in uh, herd is very important because uh, many owners do not become seriously concerned until a abortion storm is uh, observed and when ab- abortion happens they should be isolated 
and owner should be uh, instructed to keep the fetus and placenta for further laboratory examination the entire fetus placenta and paired serum sample from aborting egg should be submitted to diagnostic laboratory after consulting the laboratory person and if the complete placenta fetus is not there not available you should take proper sample and uh, send in a septic environment and uh, sample from fetus would include cranial placenta abdominal content lung liver spleen kidney these, these should be sent to uh, laboratory after uh, sending sample the animal should uh, be isolated in the in a confined area so that the aborted material does not contaminate the feed resource of the animal because most of the aborting causes are transmitted through feed uh, soil and everything flooring material should be burned using uh, fire uh, next one to reduce this embryonic loss we need to care this prolific dam yes, our management is okay in single fetus bearing but management during gestation of the sheep like avishan we need to focus that yeah there is increased fetal uh, nutritional requirement and we have to supplement the nutrition during uh, last last stage of gestation because approximately 70% of fetal growth occurs during last uh, four to six weeks of pregnancy as there are two and uh, three fetuses in the abdomen or uh, uterus there will be very less feed intake so we need to supplement high energy dense concentrate and we need to supplement around 500 to 700 gram of concentrate per day and per day and depending on the size of the breed the number of fetuses carrying the female it's better to go for ultrasonography of prolific dam like avishan whether it's carrying single fetus twin or triplicate or account, so accordingly we can announce the nutritional supplementation of the dam fourth strategy is to uh, improve the survival of newborn the dam should be shifted in a separate uh, place a pen should be prepared Uh, it should be clean dry sufficient bedding material should be provided extreme heat should be or cold should be avoided and uh, this should be uh, accessible for regular checkup also and we have to go for uh, colostrum feeding if animal is uh, having sufficient colostrum there is no issue but many times uh, in case of mul uh, multiple fetus bearing species like avishan we face that yeah the milk production is very less and there are three or four lambs are there to feed so it's better to uh, store fresh extra colostrum in freeze from other female and it can be supplemented on the basis of body weight so uh, you can calculate uh, how much requirement is there for this born so uh, usually when suppose there's three kg body weights lamb is there so the nutritional requirement will will be 600 uh, ml of this colostrum and this 600 ml should be divided into six uh, different uh, doses and 100 ml should be given at a time in six times other approach is icrc wr has developed a nutritional supplement liquid milk formula and similar formula has been developed by nai and nianp also and this uh, uh, has been termed as memna plus it contains very high protein and fat and it uh, improve the survivability and support the fast growth of pre winning lambs so uh, when we supplement uh, this from 2 um, to 3 days after this uh, birth to first 3 months it has been reported that it increased uh, the body weight by around 20 to 25% and around 3 kg uh, this memna plus is sufficient for 3 uh, months period an investment of 350 rupees can fetch 1000 rupees per lamb due to extra weight gain also so uh, another approach is to improve the survival of uh, lambs or kids are early diagnosis of respiratory diseases diarrheal diseases uh, navel and joint ill uh, so we have to take care of all the diseases and uh, by this we can improve the survival of neonates now next assisted reproductive techniques we have to change the ma management only but when we talk about assisted reproductive techniques we yeah, require some assistance in uh, form of te technical guidance one is stress synchronization it is very common and very practical technology uh, reproductive technology 
it helps in planning the breeding period and all the females can be bred or made in a very short duration and so uh, the lambing will be in very short duration and there will be very less labor cost or labor input for management and care of newborn babies in addition we can plan this stress synchronization protocol according to our market requirement and we can plan accordingly in addition this stress synchronization is very key technique when we go for artificial insemination when we go for artificial insemination the duration of uh, stress or stress window is very broad in case of sheep and goat we can't, can't we go for 3 to 4 artificial insemination so rather we should go for six time ai following stress synchronization so this is very important technique so the best protocol for this uh, stress synchronization is progesterone based protocol there are two mechanism through which we can uh, synchronize the stress one is by through increasing the uh, luteal phase or stress or another approach is to decrease the stress uh, stress cycle length by using prostaglandins so these are two major approaches so in case of uh, progesterone approach we uh, insert the progesterone in form of implant or a sponge or uh, through feeding for a uh, definitive window so that it can mimic like a artificial corpus luteum and whenever there's a withdrawal of this progesterone and there's no indigenous progesterone uh, source that is cl the animal will come into stress within window of 36 to uh, 56 hours. There are implants available in case of sheep and goat like CIDRG uh, that is a form of CIDR that is used for cattle and buffalo. Uh, another one ear implant is also available in the name of synchromate B but these are very much costly. CSWRI has developed a uh, very uh, economic indigenous progesterone sponge that is named as uh, Abicacil. Uh, this sponge is very cost effective because it comes into cost uh, at a price of 24 rupees per sponge, uh, whereas this CIDR plant implant for gold comes at the rate of 500 rupees. So it's very cost effective and the efficiency is also very good. Uh, it induces stress uh, or synchronized stress in more than 90% of Eve cyclic games. In addition, it takes care of anistress females also. And the most important advantage of this progesterone technology is that it won't cause any abortion that is that may be caused by using prostaglandin and other techniques. This is the progesterone sponge. It is inserted in a vaginal speculum, and this vaginal speculum is uh, inserted into vagina after lifting the female in this ma this manner and kept in situ for 12 days, 10 to 12 days usually. And when we draw, withdraw this progesterone after 12 days, uh, animal will come into stress after uh, approximately 48 hours. At the time of uh, progesterone insertion, there is a uh, hormone we usually uh, inject, administer, that is PMSG, polygon hormone, but nowadays it is not available. Many people ask whether the stress synchronization protocol will be succeed in, without use of PMSG. Yeah, it is equally effective. In case of cyclic animal, if yeah, any stress animal are there, then PMSG is required. And in case of uh, those animal where th there is seasonality, so during out of breeding season, this PMSG is required. Otherwise, uh, the uh, efficiency of progesterone sponge alone is it as far as to this progesterone plus PMSG protocol. Another uh, approach is prostaglandin hormone. This prostaglandin will uh, this utilize the corpus luteum. After lysis of this corpus luteum, the growing follicle will further grow and will ovulate, and animal will into, uh, will come into stress. If you are aware about the reproductive status of the female, you can insert one prostaglandin between uh, uh, five to uh, eleven to twelve days. Uh, one injection is sufficient when this uh, this corpus luteum is responsive to this prostaglandin. Because during first four days and last three to four days, this uh, corpus luteum is refractory to prostaglandin and uh, it will have no effect. So uh, if you are aware of the reproductive status, single prostaglandin injection is sufficient. But yeah, if you are not aware of this uh, reproductive status, you need to go for two injections. 
there is no corpus luteum uh, available or the corpus luteum is refracted refractory to this pg on first pg injection at the time of second pg there will be availability of a uh, responsive uh, corpus luteum that will uh, lysis in response to second uh, pg injection so at the interval of 10 to 14 days according to breed means uh, in case of sheep 10 days is sufficient in case of goat uh, 10 to 14 days we can use and the animal come into stress uh, within 48 hours of second injection another technique is artificial insemination this artificial insemination technique we can use uh, semen of elite uh, ram and uh, it can be converted into 2002 3,000 semen doses in a year. In addition to, uh, you can see Avishan sheep that is developed uh, in Avikanagar. It is a cross of Garol sheep, which is very small size breed. And uh, Malpura, uh, which is very large as compared to this Garol, and it was not possible to go for natural mating. So this artificial insemination was initially used to uh, inseminate this Malpura uh, female by this Garol semen. So this artificial technique can play crucial role uh, in cross-breeding uh, programs where there is disparity in body size. Through this technique, you can reduce the cost of maintaining breeding rim and disease spread can also be controlled. And another thing, uh, we can accelerate lambing when used with stress synchronization program and farmers wish to adopt this one, but they don't, do not want to go for artificial insemination because they say that yeah, uh, when we go for natural mating, there are 80 to 90% chances of conception, but in case of uh, artificial insemination, the chances are almost half. So uh, you just go for stress synchronization. When we go for this uh, transfer of technology area uh, for stress synchronization, people say that yeah, no, we'll use our male for mating you just do stress synchronization. But when we reach at the time of insemination or mating or response withdrawal, uh, people have complained that yeah, uh, 30, 40 females came into stress at a time and we have only one or two males, what to do? So in that case, this artificial insemination technique becomes more important. In case of sheep, uh, there are two methods. One is using fresh diluted semen and second one is frozen uh, third semen. When we talk about artificial insemination and cattle and buffalo, it's very much popular, but it's not popular in case of uh, sheep and goat. In case of goat and sheep, uh, one biggest issue is that the farmer can easily rear a male also and it gives good conception rate, but uh, can't improve the genetics of the animal. So if you wish to go for this one genetic improvement, you need to adopt this artificial insemination technique. So in both the species, the, this is not adopted in our country. In comparison to goats, in case of sheep, and uh, this is very much less ad adopted. And uh, the big issue is that artificial insemination using frozen semen in sheep is not much successful. Because uh, there are three to four folds in cervix of the sheep, and that can't be passed uh, or that can't be crossed uh, using a 16 to 18 goes needle also. So uh, there's no issue in frozen thawed semen. We've uh, conducted a lot of experiments and we've observed that the post semen quality is uh, as far uh, at par this cattle and buffalo semen, or even better, 60 to 70 percent post motility will find. But we can't use this frozen semen for insemination because when you use frozen semen, you have to insert this semen into uterus. But we can't reach to uterus. So the only choice left with us is fresh diluted semen, which can be inserted into vagina or first fold of cervix. And it gives around 50 to 60 percent conception rate. Uh, there's very much precious animal and you have to go for frozen third semen. And you need to go for laparoscopic AI or trans cervical AI. Trans cervical AI has been developed uh, in uh, India also uh, by uh, Dr. Nakvi and group that uh, called Guelph system for trans cervical AI, but it, it has a lot of complicated complications and uh, one need an uh, experienced inseminator. And even that, even that experienced inseminator can inseminate in maximum, uh, 
uh, approximately 75% of yields. So uh, the fresh diluted semen is the only choice. Um, but when we talk about uh, goat, yeah, we can go for frozen third semen also. Uh, the success rate is around 40 to 50 percent, which is better than in case of cattle and buffalo. Uh, when we go for this uh, liquid chilled semen, we um, have to dilute this spermatozoa with uh, this semen with egg yolk citrate glu uh, glucose extender at the rate of 1 is to 1 to 1 is to 3 ratio so that we can achieve the concentration of 1000 million spermatozoa per ml and to keep in at a refrigerated temperature that is 4, 5 degrees centigrade and we have to transport uh, this in a uh, ice cubes in a shipper. So this is the semen collected and we, uh, we keep in a form so that the, this does not come into direct contact of ice and there's less cold so when uh, we go for artificial insemination with hope, we bring it at 37 degrees centigrade and inseminate in sheep. It is unfortunate that with the uh, third or highest populated country with sheep, we are not able to touch the uh, insemination 1000 sheep a year, whereas country like Australia, New Zealand, they are doing insemination three to five legs each per year. So we need to improve uh, with this, uh, disseminate this technique uh, we have to uh, improve the infrastructure for this artificial insemination technique. Another technique is reproductive ultrasonography. We can go for early pregnancy diagnosis. And another important aspect is uh, to determine the fetal number and the viability because we have to plan this uh, nutrition of the dam in late gestation according to the fetal number. In addition, we can identify the number of follicles, corpus luteum. Uh, we can, uh, by corpus luteum number, we can identify the number of ovulation also. Uh, we can detect uh, the abnormalities of ovaries like follicular luteal cyst, ovarian tumors, and abnormalities of uterus like metrarities, pyometra. We can easily identify using uh, these structures using transrectal probe. In case of uh, sheep and goat, the biggest ch challenge of uh, this ultrasonography, first one is PCP and DTA. Uh, we can't move our ultrasonography. So that's not that's why it's not popular. Otherwise, the cost of ultrasonography has come down so much. And it is very much affordable. But due to this PCP and DTA act, we can't move our ultrasonography machine. Another uh, drawback is that there are very less manufacturers who, which produce transrectal uh, probe for uh, ultrasonography. So this is the uh, major issue. Uh, in case of uh, ovarian structure, we can go for uh, we can go only through transrectal ultrasonography. Otherwise, it is very difficult uh, using transabdominal ultrasonography. Uh, you can see appreciate the number of uh, free ovulatory follicle. It's two here while it's one here. Corpus luteum can easily be detected. Yeah, this is a homogeneous structure, uh, hypoechoic structure. These are two corpus luteum supplemented uh, in the eve, supplemented with omega-3 fatty acid. Yeah, many times we get confused with this structure, whether it's cyst or not. No, it's not a uh, luteal cyst, it's uh, cystic corpus luteum where there's an echoic cavity, fluid-filled cavity uh, in between this uh, luteal space. Ovarian cyst, uh, how will we identify? We can't uh, uh, identify this follicular cyst by single scan. It's a condition where large follicle persists for at least 10 days. So we have to go for ultrasonography twice at the 10 days interval. And if there's any structure which persists and it is more than 9 mm to 10 mm in sheep and get goat, yeah, it's uh, follicular cyst. And when, uh, yeah, follicular cyst and luteal cyst, this is a very dynamic structure. Follicular cyst can convert into luteal cyst after luteinization of this granulous cells, suppose first time you observed, yeah, here follicular cyst, and on next scan you find, yeah, there's luteinization in the cavity. So it has been converted into it has converted into luteal cyst. For pregnancy diagnosis, uh, we should go for uh, rectal probe in case of early uh, pregnancy, uh, up to 40 days. Beyond 40 days, it's very difficult to uh, appreciate the whole fetus uh, through this rectal probe. And you need to go for abdominal probe, transabdominal probe after 40 days. 
uh, you can identify the fetus as early as 15 to 17 days. Yeah, there will be an embryonic vesicle, but it can't be confirmed so early. But around 24 to 25 days, you, you can easily find yeah, there's embryonic vesicle, uh, fluid or fetal mass is there. You can appreciate the uh, heartbeat also uh, by 25 days. Placentums can be appreciated around one month's age and fetal bones can be uh, detected on at a two months of age. When we are going for transabdominal ultrasonography, we can easily identify the number or we can identify, uh, measure the fetal number. You can see uh, there are one and two fetus are there through the vertebrae, heartbeat or head count we can identify. And the best time to identify fetal number is around uh, 45 to 60 days. Best time for pregnancy diagnosis using transabdominal uh, transactive uh, ultrasonography is around 30 days. The major observation I, I wish to convey to you that uh, we should plan the breeding period first if we wish to increase the uh, pro, uh, this uh, reproductive efficiency of the sheep and goat. And we should not go for uh, throughout year breeding we need to separate both male and female so that we can go for hand mating. We can record all the things. Uh, we can uh, manage all the things. And nutritional sufficiency is very important aspect. Uh, all the growing male, female, and adult uh, female, particularly during gestation period, they should be provided sufficient concentration green. And we need to uh, adopt this accelerated feeding or lambing protocol by using uh, vigorously. Suppose now when uh, female has uh, lambed or uh, feeded, so we need to go for second breeding before three months. So that uh, uh, the, there should be inter lambing interval of uh, or inter feeding interval of eight months only. Otherwise, usually what we see that uh, the uh, inter lambing interval is more than one year in case of our uh, Indian sheep and goat. So we need to uh, accelerate the lambing and feeding. So we can use the uh, techniques, uh, adopt the technique of stress synchronization. We can take help of uh, artificial insemination also. Uh, we need to uh, early intervene the infertility problem so that non-productive period can be uh, decreased. A time has come to improve the prolificacy with the increasing intensive system of uh, rearing of sheep and goat. As a lot of entrepreneurs are coming, they will focus on improved prolificacy. So we can improve the prolificacy through plushing or omega-3 or through uh, this integration of thick vision. And the important aspect that is work, uh, that usually go unnoticed is uh, embryonic and fetal loss, and we need to reduce this one and improve the survival of newborn. Thank you.